<laughs> now we're gonna, I'm gonna give you this really boring sex segment. It's called diatonic harmony. There's these rules that you learn in college as far as how chords work. Now that was really great grammar I just used. How do the chords work? Do you ever pick up a piece of music and you go, how on earth did they come up with those? Well, this will explain it really easily. But the diatonic harmony, I gotta tell you the legitimate way and then I'll show you how to cheat, okay? Because I don't think you should cheat unless you really know what you're cheating on. Did that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, eight notes in the scale. And C, D, E, F, G, A, which is used a C scale, right? What are the three major chords in the key of C? C, C F, F, and G. What are the minor chords in the key of C? D, E, and A. Now look, whatever chord you put at 12 o'clock is the, is the tonic. That's the key you're in. Always put it at 12 o'clock. All right, then look. The fourth, this is called, if you go to the right on the circle, it's called the circle of fourths. From C to F is four, from F to B flat is four. Do you see where I'm coming from there? Every one of these intervals is a fourth apart. All right. The fifth, if I go to the left on the circle, it's called the circle of fifths. From C to G is five, C to G, C to G. And from G to D is five, A to E is five, and so forth, okay? So, whatever chord I put at 12 o'clock is always chord number one, that's in any key. If I wanna play in the key of F, the F is gonna be up there. That's why we make it circular, so you can turn it. Because I like to have 12 o'clock as my reference point. Okay? Now, if you have it written on a piece of paper, you obviously you can't turn it. So it's kind of nice to have that circle that you can hold in your hand and you can turn it around. All right. So the three major chords on my circle, if I'm playing in the key of C, are one to the right and one to the left. Now, you know the cheer, and, and this is really important. And, and even though you, it might sound silly, well, I have a big mouth, so when I was in high school, I was a cheerleader. So lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. That's how you find the major chords in a song. So watch, find the tonic, or the name of the, the key, lean to the left, and lean to the right. Those are the three major chords, that's why those are the first three chords you ever learned. Not because they were the easiest chords, it's because they were in the easiest key. What? Key of C, Spanish key. All right, so far so good? So if I, C, so if I say to you, play a song in the key of G, what are the major chords? D and C. And always go to the left first, because that's the dominant. In the key of C, G is the next most important chord, the dominant, and F is subdominant. Now there's a little story. It's a chauvinist story, but it works. This is home, this is the wife, this is the husband. Husband, dominant, not in my house. This is, don't show this on the internet. <laughs> This is wife, subdominant. Okay? House, husband, wife. Now here's how the chords work. And I'll come back to that little story in a minute. Diatonic harmony works like this. Chord number one in the song can go anywhere. It is said that the second chord of the song is the hardest one to find. Once you get the second one, you generally can get on a roll and the pattern will kick in. It's that second chord that'll get you. All right, number chord number two, I'll 
always goes to chord number five, which is almost always has a seven on it. Okay. So what's chord number two in the key of C? G. Let's put let's put little M's here for now. D minor, right? Chord number three. Oh, D minor goes to G seven. Chord number three is what? E minor goes to six. E minor goes to A minor. Chord number four goes to one or five seven. If you pick the wrong ones, no big deal. It will still sound fine. An F chord will generally go back to C or go to G. Chord number five with a seven on it goes to one and chord number six goes to two. Now watch. Now it's just logic kicks in. If the first chord of the song is C, and just pick it, let's pick chord number six for the second chord, okay? Chord number six is what? A minor. Now, I just go down here, and where does the rule say chord number six should go? Two. Two. What's two? D minor. And where should two go? Five. And where should five go? Back to one. That's probably the whole song. All right. If I'm playing a song and chord number one is C, and I pick chord number three for my next chord, here, here will be my progression. C, and the second chord of the song, the composer decided E minor would be good. Okay? So, I'm on chord number three now. Where should my next chord be? Six. What's chord number six? A minor. And this is all logic. Where should chord number six go? Two. What's two? D minor. And where should chord number two go? Five, seven. G, seven. And my last chord will end up where I started. At one. I can see. How cool, huh? Very good. Now, let's just hear it. Okay. See? And chord number three was an E minor. Different. It pretty much stays the same all the way through the song. 